Hello guys, welcome all of you back with our web application development discussion series. Today we are going to program our buy now process. In our home web page, we have displayed our available products. And within this product card, we have given a button as buy now. When we click on this buy now button, it's going to take us into our single product view web page. In here, we can see the details relevant to this selected product. And here we can select our quantity. And then here we have given a button as buy now. When we click on this buy now button, it's going to bring us into this payment gateway in this project we are going to use pay here payment gateway to do our purchases you can search on your browser as payhere.lk and from the first link you can come into this payhere's website in here we have an option as knowledge base when we click on this knowledge base it's going to take us into this website to test whether this payment gateway is working properly we are going to use a sandbox in a sandbox we don't have to use real money we can try and see whether the purchase purchasing process is working properly or not in here we have a link as sandbox and testing when we click on that it's going to take us into this sandbox and testing web page in this page they have given us a description about this sandbox environment and in here we have been given a card details and they have given us visa card a mastercard and a mix card so when we use a sandbox we need to use one of these card details in order to check whether this process is working or not in here we have a link as sandbox when we click on this sandbox it's going to take us into our merchant portal so let's go into our code and see how we have programmed this here we have our home.php file within our home.php file here we have given a button as buy now. We have used the anchor tag in order to create this buy now button. As the value of href attribute, we have given a PHP script and we have said to print single product view.php and here we have concatenated our product ID into this ID name. So when we click on this buy now button, it's going to take us into this single product view.php file and it's also going to forward a selected product product id into this single product view.php file so let's go into our single product view.php file within our single product view.php file here we have our buy now button within the buy now button we have given an on click function as pay now and within the opening and closing bracket of our pay now function we have given a php script and we have said to print the product id of this selected product let's go into our script.js file in our script.js file here we have our pay now function and from here we have taken the forwarded product id and we have stored that value in id variable in the next line we have taken the element which id is equal to qty input and we have taken its value and we have stored that value in variable qty then from here we have created a new request and we have stored that request in variable r then here we have checked whether the request state has been changed or not if it's changed then we have called this function let's talk about this function after we look into our buy now process.php file at the bottom of our function we have given the request method as get and we have given the destination file as buy now process.php and from here we have concatenated our variable id value into name id and we have also concatenated quantity value into this qty name and then from here we have sent this request into buy now process.php file so let's go into our buy now process.php file in our buy now process.php file here we have inserted the php script and then here we have started the session then 
we have imported our connection.php file into this binowprocess.php file. Then here we have checked whether this user is logged into our web page or not. If that user is logged into our web page, then these codes will be executed. And from here we have taken the ID which has been forwarded from single product view.php file and we have stored that value in $PID variable. In the next line, we have also taken the value which has been sent to QTY name and we have stored that value in $QTY variable. In the next line, we have taken the user's email address and we have saved this in variable umail. After that, we have created the variable as array. Then we have created the variable as order id and we have given it a unique id using unique id function after that here we have run a search query and we have said select all from product table where id column value is equal to dollar pid variable value and we have stored this result sent in dollar product rs variable in the next line we have taken the first row from our product rs variable and we have stored that in product data variable so from here we have taken our product details then in here we have taken our city details in order to find out the delivery fee relevant to that city and here we have run a search query as select all from user has address table where user email column value is equal to email variable value and we have stored that value in variable city rs in the next line we have checked how many rows are available in city rs variable and we have stored that value in city num variable then here we have checked whether the city num is equal to one or not if it's equal to 1, that means we have taken that user's city successfully and then within this if condition, then from here we have taken the first row from city rs and we have stored that value in city data variable. And in the next line, we have taken the city id value from city data variable and we have stored that value in city id variable in the next line we have taken the line 1 and line 2 from city data variable and we have stored that value in address variable then from here we have run a search query as select all from city table where id column value is equal to city id value and we have stored that result set in district rs variable in the next line we have taken the first row from district rs result set and we have stored that value in district data variable so from here we have taken that user's district details in the next line we have taken the district id value from district data variable and we have stored that value in district id variable in the next line we have created a new variable as delivery and we have assigned its value as zero from here we have checked whether the district id is equal to one or not if it's equal to one in our database we have defined it's as the Colombo district so from here we have checked whether this district is equal to Colombo or not if this condition is true then from here we have taken the delivery fee Colombo value from product data variable and we have stored that value in delivery variable if this statement is not true then we have taken the delivery fee other value from product data variable and we have stored that value in delivery variable after that if else condition here we have taken the title value from product data variable and we have stored that value in dollar item variable and then here we have calculated our price amount and for that here we have taken the delivery cost and we have converted it into an integer value then the quantity and we have also converted it into an integer and we have also taken the price value from product data variable and we have also converted it into an integer value and then we have multiplied this price by the quantity and we have add our delivery cost into this calculated price and we have stored those values in amount variable after that from here we have taken the user's first name and we have stored that value in fname variable 
and then we have taken the last name and we have stored value that value in l name variable and we have also taken that user's mobile number and we have stored that value in mobile variable and here we have taken the user's address and we have stored that value in user address variable and we have also taken the district name from district data variable and we have stored that value in city variable and then here we have assigned those variable value into our previously created array after that from here we have used a function as json encode and within the opening and closing bracket of this json encode function we have given our array name as variable array so this function is going to encode this array and from this echo keyword it's going to give us a response and that response will be going into our script.js file so let's go back into our script.js file in here we have checked whether the state of our request is equal to 4 if it's equal to 4 from here we have taken the response from our by now process.php file and we have stored that responses in variable t and then in here we have given a code as json.pass.t and from here it's going to take that encoded array from our by now process.pha file and this pass function will decode that encoded json object into a string and that value will be assigned into this variable obg in the next line we have taken the email address from that obg variable and we have assigned that value in variable mail in the next line we have taken the amount from our obg variable and we have assigned that value in variable amount then in here we have checked whether the variable t value is equal to one or not if it's equal to one we have given a alert as please login or sign up and we have redirected that user into our index.php file if the response is not equal to one then from here we have checked whether the response is equal to two or not if it's equal to two then we have given an alert as please update your profile first and we have also redirected that user into user profile.php file if the response is not equal to one or two then we have run this else part in order to work this payment gateway successfully we need to use some javascript code and that has been given from pay here web page in here now we are in our knowledge base web page and within the api and mobile sdk part here we have a link as javascript sdk so let's click on this and it's going to take us into this web page then here they have described to us about this javascript sdk and then here they have given us the code which we need to use in order this payment gateway to work and here we have a script opening and closing tag we, we need to input this script code into our script.js file and here we have given another script opening and closing tag and we need to put this in our single product view.php file so let's go back into our code within the single product.php file here we have inserted pay here a script file and within the script.js file here we have inserted that javascript code this part will be executed when this payment process is completed and then this part will be executed if this payment process is dismissed and this part will be executed if any errors occur during the payment process after the payment is completed here we have redirected that user into our invoice.php file and in here within the payment variable here we have a sandbox true and here we have been given a merchant id and we need to put our merchant id here you can find that merchant id in pay here merchant portal and then go into this interrogation part within the interrogation here we have our merchant id so you need to put this merchant id in our code so here we have inserted our merchant id 
then here we have given our return url and we have given it as a single product view.php file and we have also embedded the product id into name id and then the cancel url we have also given the same url and then here we have our order id items amount currency first name last name email phone address city and country delivery address delivery city delivery country names and we have taken the values from our object variable relevant to these names and we have assigned them into these names after this payment part here we have called this function to start so it's going to start our payment gateway so let's go back into our web page from our single product view.phe file let's click on this buy now button when we click on this buy now button it's going to pop up our payment gate and here we have our cards as visa master american express and so on so let's click on visa and from here we can enter our card details since we are using a sandbox environment we don't need to insert the actual card details so let's enter a name for this card then the credit card number we need to use one of these card number you can find them in sandbox and testing web page so let's copy this visa card card number and let's paste it here and then we need to insert a vv which only contains three numbers and then a expiry date please remember when you inserted the expiry date you need to insert at a future date so let's enter so let's click on this pay button when we click on this pay button it's going to give us payment success then we will be redirected into invoice.php file now if we go into our merchant portal and if we go into our payments option in here you can see the details of our purchased items here we have our payment number, day, item title, and the type of the payment, and the status, and then the payment amount. So guys, that's all for today. Thanks all of you for joining with me. See you in the next video.